I am so frustrated right now. My current backup solution is broken and I need to fix it, but Synology isn't making it easy for me. So I need to figure that out. This is our Synology DS2415 Plus. It's old. The last two digits of the model number denote the model year, so this NAS was built in 2015. It's now 2022 and this unit is showing its age. We've got 11 8 terabyte disks in this unit and it's got an absolutely massive amount of storage space around 70 terabytes. In the beginning, Sumo, that's what we called it, did everything. Stored two guys tech stuff and my personal stuff too. Over time, its role has changed, and as time has gone on, Sumo has received updates, patches, and new versions of DSM, and its performance has slowed to a crawl. These days, Sumo's only job is to run backups for workstations and VMs, nothing else. This is fine. We've gotten a ton of functional use out of the NAS, and time takes its toll on all of us, hardware included. Anyway, let's talk about backups since that's what I'm all bent out of shape on. The only thing we use the DS2415 Plus for these days is backup, and that's because Synology does it really, really well. Synology's backup software is known as Active Backup for Business, and in terms of what it's capable of backing up, it does everything. It backs up our virtual machines, physical workstations, and all of our cloud stuff in G Suite. It has all of the high-end features that you'd expect from enterprise backup software, like instant recovery of VMs, bare metal restores of workstations, and file level restores for workstations and VMs alike, and in terms of the G Suite stuff, it backs up all of our Google Drive stuff and everyone's email as well. When I say it's legit good, I mean it, it's legit good. Not to mention the fact that it's completely free if you own a Synology. So why am I even talking about this if it's that good? Just buy another Synology, right? Wrong! So that's where this whole thing comes apart at the seams for me. That was my first thought, of course. I love this product. I'm gonna reward Synology by getting the newest generation of the same thing and continue my patronage of their company. I mean, that's what you do if you like a company's products, right? You buy more of them. Well, unfortunately, not necessarily in this case. I did the research, found the current model, the DS3622XS Plus with its 6-core Xeon D1531, 16 gigs of RAM out of the box, 12 drive bays, PCIe expansion, 2x1 gig and 2x10 gig Ethernet connections. It has practically everything you'd want. This thing is a serious beast. This big honking NAS isn't cheap. Just the enclosure alone, no drives, comes in at a whopping three grand. Let me tell you, I was ready to pull that trigger. Yes, it's expensive, but the value and performance are there for me. And the plan was to move all 12 of my existing drives over, import the volume, and boom, up and running, all my configs, backups, and whatnot are ready to go. And then like a bolt of lightning, I was brought back down to earth. One doesn't make a decision to buy a $3,000 NAS lightly, and as I was researching more into it, I noticed something concerning. Negative reviews everywhere. Look. Synology is typically universally loved in terms of their product line because they do such a great job of creating an end-user friendly experience that anyone, including your parents, can use. So seeing so many negative reviews everywhere is a stark contrast. Let's start with Amazon. This Synology unit will only support some Western digital drives and the proprietary Synology Toshiba drives. It will run other drives, but they will force you to look at a critical storage pool message stating incompatible drives. Looks like Synology has gotten a little greedy this time. We will start replacing our eight Synology systems with another brand. And how about B&H Photo? I have over 40 Synology NAS units installed in the field, and this is one of two units I am disappointed in. The HDDs and SDDs must be Synology. They are not compatible with any other drive. Before purchasing this unit, make sure you are getting the right HDD, SDDs, or you will be disappointed. And the list goes on and on. So what gives? What is the actual issue here? Why are so many people talking about vendor lock-in and drive compatibility issues? Let's clarify a bit. First things first, Synology is not forcing vendor lock-in technically. Let's dive more into this. First reported by Serve the Home in February 2021, Synology decided to launch its own line of enterprise disks for their NASes. These disks aren't made by Synology, but are rather rebranded to Shiba drives with tweaked firmware and a pretty new label. Synology's intentions were pretty clear. They wanted to sell disks that were designed, tested, and verified for the best performance in their SMB and enterprise-grade NASes. Synology would tell you that other storage vendors do this all of the time, and so for them to do it makes sense. On top of this, at least at the time, Synology was locking their SMB and enterprise NAS gear to only work with their own drives. Oh, and did I mention that the Synology branded drives have quite the premium over generic Toshiba branded versions? Feels like a shameless money grab to me. This, of course, led to public outcry from the user base because this sort of behavior might be reasonable from an enterprise storage system from Dell or HPE with their four hour turnaround and support, 
but not Synology. That's really not the space that Synology plays in. Plenty of people, including myself, who are in small businesses, buy Synology because we can build out our own NASAs how we see fit with the drives that we wish. So, after major backlash, and rightfully so, Synology relented and allowed the use of unverified drives in the units that were previously locked down, but would throw out error messages and warnings that made the user feel like the sky is falling and that their storage volumes were on the precipice of destruction. Still kind of strong arming people into using their drives. Now, they've made even more changes in response to the continued customer backlash about how they alert and display messages, but as it currently stands, if you put a non-Synology drive into your new NAS, you're gonna have a bad time. Enough history lesson, back to why I'm frustrated here. This poses a problem for me, one that's not easily solved. I need to be able to back up, and I had hoped that Synology would make this a no-brainer, but it didn't. So I started researching alternatives. I need to be able to back up my G Suite stuff, my VMs, my workstations, etc., and find agnostic backup software that provides such a feature set without spending a ton in licensing. In my professional life, I use Veeam as our enterprise backup solution. It does all of the things, and it doesn't really care where you store your backups as long as the throughput is sufficiently fast enough. I can build up a dedicated storage system on TrueNAS, for example, on server hardware and dump the backups there. That seems like a good idea until I had a very rude awakening. Pricing out Veeam was jaw-dropping. To back up what I've got right now puts a lot into perspective. Veeam has moved to a subscription licensing model, and based on what I need in terms of backup, the grand total came to $3,400 a year. Holy shit. And the numbers I've entered here is what my current backup environment looks like. That price has no room for growth in it. Veeam is a non-starter. Oh, and for those of you out there who say, just get the free version of Veeam, I'd love to, but it only supports 10 workloads for free. I'm beyond that with just my VMs alone. Dear Veeam, please increase the number to 20. Okay, thanks, bye. So this left me in a lurch. Do I suck it up, buy a $3,000 Synology and live with that unsupported drive message, or do I continue to look for alternatives? When I tell you that I spent a lot of time debating this, I mean it. I've been making this video now for over a month, so yeah. Anyway, I started digging further into the issue of the unsupported drive message and what that actually means from a storage reliability perspective. I can't just throw away 11 8 terabyte drives because Synology doesn't think they're good enough, especially when they work perfectly fine in their older gear. So I started trying to find out how I might just bypass this whole mess, and I started seeing that there were clearly ways to do so. All that's really left for me to do here was to decide if it's worth the risk or not. So... I did it. Newegg had the best price at the time, and I bought the system from them. Interestingly enough, Newegg will not let you return this unit once you purchased it because, well, Newegg sucks, that's why. So if this all fails me, I'll have to figure something else out instead. Here it is in all of its, uh, glory, I guess. From the outside, it looks identical to the DS2415 that it's replacing. Now all that's left to do is to see if I'm an idiot or not. Join me, won't you? First things first, let's move the old drives over to the new unit. Then we'll plug the unit into power and give it a single network connection and power it up. Synology has a nifty way of helping people set up their NASes. Once the NAS is online, we just pop a browser and head over to find.synology.com. The new NAS will appear and we can start the process of getting it going. Since we're migrating from the old system to the new system, the setup noticed the drives and everything that came from the old DS2415 Plus, and it'll start the migration process. So far, this is all that I'd expect from Synology. And then after waiting 10 minutes for the system to reboot, it didn't seem like it worked. And I started it all over again, I thought anyway. However, the setup seemed to continue, and after a short period of time, I got what I hoped for, my login page. Let's see if the migration fully took. And it looks like it did. Everything seems normal to me. Honestly, I'm not really sure what I expected when this thing finally booted. Part of me thought I'd be treated to a wasteland of error messages and chaos. Count me pleasantly surprised. Now let's go check out the drives. Let's see what we have here. All of my volume looks to be imported without issue, and there's our unsupported drives messages right here. The enclosure display shows red, which would probably scare anyone who looked at a glance. But in the list of the drives, all the drives show their smart data, temperature, and health. So, other than the error message of unsupported drives, things look totally fine. This is a pleasant surprise. Outside of the error message, this is completely fine. And if I'm being honest, all this concern feels completely overblown. So let's give it a few days, have it do some backups, and see what happens. Here's Active Backup for Business, again running on the DS3622XS Plus, and all looks good. VMs and clients are backing up, and all is well. This is fantastic. 
I still have the nagging error message when I go to Storage Manager in DSM, and that doesn't make me happy. For the record, I don't think that what Synology is doing here is right. Sure, they overstepped, they got spanked for it, and they backtracked some of their more serious restrictions. But to me, the fact they left the unverified drive message tells me that they still have ambitions to lock out non-Synology drives in the future, or why else would you have left the message in the first place? And from a personal perspective, I think Synology got ahead of itself. It's fair to have ambitions to compete with the traditional enterprise storage vendors like Dell, HPE, and so on, but doing so at the detriment of your current customer base is crazy. Look, people like you. I like you because we can use any drives we want and have a great user experience. Don't change that. One last thing. I mentioned earlier in the video that people had found a way to make the error messages go away. And so I dug into it further to see if I might be able to do the same thing. Unfortunately, the write-ups I found don't align with the data I see on my DS3622XS Plus, and so I don't feel comfortable making the changes. And realistically speaking, it's also not a smart idea since I need the system to be stable and reliable, and there's no telling how modifying the file will affect the reliability of the NAS, especially when Synology pushes out updates. I know what you're thinking. You want more Two Guys tech and more storage, and we've got the thing for you. Check out this playlist over here of all the storage reviews we've done in the past.